Hey guys, welcome back to Get a Garage. My name is Mike. So, if you've been watching our videos on the Jeep right now, uh, go ahead and click the link up there and it will show you what we've been up to so far. Um, but basically, we have got the head off of the Jeep and it is currently at the machine shop uh, getting some new valves installed. So we went with Manly and we went to, I called him a few times, I had to hound him a little bit, get him some information, but we were able to get him the information they needed. And we were able to get some Inconel valves made for this. So if you guys aren't familiar, uh, the Jeep Liberties have had like a sporadic problem. It's not a, uh, I wouldn't say everybody has this problem because some people have got 300,000 plus miles on their Jeeps and doesn't really seem to have a problem. They don't really seem to have a problem. Other people, get to around the, it depends, anywhere from 115,000 miles on up to 200,000 miles or so, something around there, um, the valves will snap off right at the stem. So let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. Anyway, so we got here two of the old valves. These were pulled out of our head. And you can kind of see here, my, uh, my light's not really letting us pick it up too much. However, um, there's a hard line right here. I'm assuming where the valve guide stopped hitting, possibly the seal. That's not a machining mark right there or anything. That's just, you can kind of see where it's shiny and where it stops being shiny. Right here. So, not 100% sure if that's the spot. However, it did seem to me that these were breaking off down at the bottom and then falling into the cylinder. So they would be bouncing around in there. The valve sits in this position and it opens and closes and lets the exhaust gases out. So the exhaust gas is getting too hot may have caused, this, caused these problems, um, possibly even overheating at some point in the engine's life. So not really sure, don't wanna take a chance. It's not every day that you get the chance to kind of tear an engine all the way down to the block and replace anything that you don't like. Um, there was a college study performed on these valves and uh, it appears as though there's a repeat failure method in at least some of them. We're not sure, uh, at least in the video that, or the, the paper that I read, I, I wasn't really sure what caused it. It seemed to be uh, heat stress possibly, uh, over fric some, some friction heat maybe, I'm not 100% sure. However, in uh, diesel fashion, what, uh, what they do in the Duramaxes and Power Strokes and the big diesels, they'll go ahead and they'll put Inconel valves in. So that's exactly what we did. We went to Manly and uh, I sent them a sample valve and they were able to make me a set of eight exhaust valves to match. So while we were in here, we figured we would go ahead and we would get the, the upgraded valves. Now, uh, this is kind of a test. Nobody's ever put them in this Jeep before that I'm aware of anyway. So we're gonna do it and see how it goes. But I just wanted to take a second to talk about what we did. Um, I will uh, let you know the type of valves that we used. All right, so we did have the custom valves made by Manly. Like I said, this is the the part number that they made it from, and also some of the dimensions here that they were able to figure out. Um, so Inconel is uh, their Gen 2 Extreme Alloy. That's what they call it, um, but it's basically an Inconel alloy, and Inconel is a very super tough, hard metal that can withstand really, really high high exhaust gas temperatures, higher than what we should ever see on this Liberty. So um, with that being said, we got them in the car. They are in the head right now, and the head is ready to be picked up from the machine shop. So we're gonna go pick it up and take a look and see what she looks like. We got the head back in, and we do have the canal valves in here now, so we should never have, and, and, and this was kind of one of the reasons why I was always terrified to drive this. I didn't want to break the rockers. I was afraid of dropping a valve. I was afraid of, of a valve slipping off. Um, for a while there, I was afraid of driving it with uh, a worn timing belt, and I did that for a little while, and then I replaced it quickly. So as long as you keep up to maintenance and do what you're supposed to do this Jeep, 
it will do what it's supposed to do they are 15 years old at this point so you know you got to take a little bit of the bad with the good so we uh spent some money on these veils and uh there are these ones right here so we are uh getting ready to put this sucker back in i just wanted to make a little side video kind of explain this a little bit uh one other thing i figured i should mention while we're talking about the veil job um the valves were custom made and they were about 600 bucks and also the installation of the valves was on another 300 bucks so all in uh, 900 dollars on these upgraded exhaust valves which is definitely not cheap however if you think about the fact that you won't have to take the head off next time to get in here to do any of this work 900 dollars is what i have into it um it might actually be less than that if other people decide to do it now that it's already all been figured out there was other stuff that i did that probably didn't need to be done like i bought a digital caliper i bought a sample valve that i could send to manly um, i did a bunch of stuff like that to try and see how we could make this work out um, but another consideration is if you did snap a valve and the valve dropped into the cylinder you're likely going to be facing quite a hefty repair bill um, at the end of the day if it damages the block now you got to pull the block that's got to be brought to a machine shop. You may need pistons. You may bend a rod. Um, the head might get damaged. At the end of the day, it could damage and mess up so much stuff that it's possible that you may not even want to do anything with it anymore. And I see them a lot. People are selling their project Jeeps at this point. So um, this is definitely a good upgrade and hopefully it works well. I mean, I'm kind of the prototype here, so I guess we'll see how it works. But uh i have uh, you know I'm, I'm taking my knowledge from the fact that they put these heavy duty valves and duramaxes and power strokes and cummings and obviously they're not the same size but the material is the same so you know hopefully that's gonna be good enough for this diesel and you know hey if it if it keeps my engine in one piece i'm happy and maybe i can uh, turn the boost up a little bit with uh higher and can all uh, the higher temperature rated valves so we'll see we'll see um there's some hot tunes out there available for this so we'll, we'll have to check them out anyway that's it guys head is ready to go back in check out the video we've had a lot of videos requests to do uh, head gasket repair so uh we figured we'd throw that in with our head studs head gasket valves head studs and rockers this engine should be good for the next 300,000 miles Let's keep our fingers crossed, guys. Stay tuned for more content, and we'll see you next time.